Uh, my name is Taylor Warren. I work as a ICU nurse. Um, been doing that for about two years, and then uh, just recently started at um, as an anesthesia student to become a CRNA. Okay. Um, education wise, we uh, had a had opportunity in high school to be able to go ahead and and get like involved in a healthcare um, type track. And so we got to take a couple of classes to kind of get started with that. Um, and then that kind of set up for getting a bachelor's in science and nursing. Um, it's just a four year degree. Um, and then in order to go back to anesthesia school, you had to have at least one year of ICU experience, but most of the time it takes two years to go ahead and get accepted. Um, Four-year versus two-year degree. I think the two-year degree is awesome, especially with the new uh, Tennessee Promise program where they can get it for free. Um, I worked with a girl who, when we got hired as new grads into the ICU, she had her associates. Um, and if I could have got mine for free, they started the year after I graduated, so I qualified for that. But um, I definitely would have done it because then most companies will pay for you to go back and get your bachelor's and you can work while doing that. Um, so you could potentially come out with a bachelor's degree and never have paid a dime for it. So I think the sometimes there's a negative stigma that I think just socially is placed on uh, um, associate's degrees or community college. But if you're looking for a, a way to get a good degree for for free most of the time, I mean, it's a great, great option. And salary wise, there's no difference either. They all get paid the same. A uh, typical day is it can, it can vary quite a bit. Um, but usually you come in and you have two patients to one nurse. Uh, if we're fully staffed, obviously during COVID, <laughs> we've not been very well staffed. So that usually is more like three patients per nurse. Um, but you've got patients who are very, very sick. They're on the edge of kind of life and death. And um, you're kind of constantly on your toes and constantly battling to see, you know, what, what you can do to keep them on the life side of things. <laughs> so it's, it's very, um, you got to be very attentive and very careful with what you're doing. Like I said, you've, you've got two to three people's lives in your hands for 12 hours a day. So I love the interaction with the patients and the patients' families. Um, it got pretty tough during COVID to really enjoy that. Um, hopefully we can get back to how it used to be, but I really enjoyed interacting with them, you know, helping them get better and get out of the hospital and, and kind of talking to them about what they were excited about getting back to if they got healthy, healthier. So. Uh, the things I enjoyed most were sports um, and the biggest uh, kind of parallel that I could draw between the two. Um, I played football and was a wrestler in high school. And so uh, definitely had to have a lot of self-discipline and, and the, you know, working together as a team and football. Um, they definitely come into play because in nursing, you're part of a interdisciplinary team where you work with doctors and respiratory therapists and physical therapists, occupational therapists, all kinds of uh, professions that all have to come together and work as a cohesive unit to take care of the patient. Uh, I think the biggest surprise is um, probably just how much you, you really have to know to be able to take care of these patients. And, um, and especially if you go into like a teaching facility um, where you have doctors who are fresh out of medical school, um, there's a lot of times where you have the responsibility of teaching new doctors as a ICU nurse, especially. So it's kind of kind of surprising to the general public, I feel like. Uh, definitely, definitely keep up with science and math. Uh, big part of any kind of bachelor's in science is going to be those two aspects. Got to be able to calculate your, um, you know, medication doses or 
patient weights and heights and all that stuff. Um, so definitely take serious those courses um, and really identify what kind of a learner you are and kind of hone your study habits to, to that type of learning. So if you're a kinesthetic learner or more of an auditory learner, really try to manipulate your style of studying to focus on those types of learning.